Yo, what's up guys? Rich on Touch Loops here. And today we're going to be carrying on with our Creating the Sounds of series. And we're going to be looking at the album from Tom Mish and Yusef Days called What Kind of Music? So what we're looking at on screen here is a session that I made, which is actually taken from the demo for our Soulful Drum Loops pack. But it just felt like a really good example of kind of getting the same kind of tones and vibes that Tom Mish has gone for with this album. And the drumming and the playing was obviously styled by Yusef as well. So it just made complete sense. So what we're looking at is Ableton, as always. But it's basically a beefed up version of what the demo was using a few techniques which I always talk about. Namely, these auxers within Ableton. I'll, uh, I'll put a little link in the corner to show you how to do this because we uh, created a video that was called Making Your DAW Sound More Analog. And this basically shows you how you route things into channels, how you can stop it from having external in like this. As you can see, there's no input coming in. And it also means we can carry on with this whole like analog vibe because going by what I've read, the Yusef Days album was either track to tape or through tape, but it definitely involved a big desk, kind of really going for those old school tones and it complements the sound really well. So yeah, let's have a spin through this, we'll listen to it, and then I'll show you how it was made. So there it is, quite a simple one. But I think it's the quality of the layers that really show off their music. As, like, as you know, you know, it's quite simple, but if you get everything right, you really do get the vibe. So let's break it down how we've got. Quick overview, as you can see, literally just ambience, drums, bass, guitars, roads, and then the vocal section. This is going into these channels. So as you can see, drums, the whole group's being rooted into an aux. Same with bass, same with guitars, and same with synths. On the group, quickly showing you, got the uh, virtual rack from Slate. Something I always go to just because I like this channel, which is really helpful for gain staging. And also, it means I can have a little bit of compression if I want to. And then obviously, again, I've boosted it a tiny little bit. Cool. So let's start with the drums. These are taken from our Soulful Drum Loops pack. And nothing on the group, but this one, as you can see, we're going to take these things off so you can hear what they come like. And as I was saying, this is me beefing things up because if you listen to the to the album, it's kind of got quite a lot of saturation going through it. I read an article and also listened to Tom Mish talking about his use of decapitator and tape machines. So it felt, felt like the right thing to do to copy those things and get to where we want to be. So raw drum loop. Sounds great. Exactly the kind of beat that we're looking for, but in this piece, obviously we want things to little be a little bit heavier. So let's go to this hip hop section. Really nicely played. So let's turn them on individually and then you can see what I've done and we'll talk about why I did it. So first, tape machine. Instantly gives us a little bit of a boost. I always talk about how this tape machine's got an amazing low end bump. And in this scenario, it's been perfect. And it gives us a little bit of saturation, a little bit of compression. Going into our trusty friend, the decapitator. A little bit more drive, a little bit more saturation. 
not sure if you're aware, but these uh, styles on the bottom are all based on different types of tubes, types of preamps and things of the sort. I felt this first one was the most appropriate sound for what we're looking for. Next, I've got into an EQ. So what am I doing here? We're rolling off the bomb because I don't want any subs just because I've got a bass playing. Uh, a tiny bit of a scoop at 200 because it can get a little bit muddy. And then these notches are just a little bit of harshness that was brought out by using the distortion. Sometimes you'll find that if you add gain and saturation, it does start to exaggerate frequencies, which might get a little bit stabby, a little bit bright in the eyes. So all I've done is I've pulled them out. Cool. And then next virtual mix rack. So what we're doing here, we're adding a little bit of low lift. So just a little bit of bump. And then we've got a tiny bit of 40 hertz in this EQ. So there's an API style EQ. And then we've got another EQ at the end, which looks like it's neutral, not doing anything. So with this and without. Just a little push. It's worth noting as well that on my group, obviously, we've got this. So we can try it with and without that so you can see the benefit. Cool. So that, that compression is doing really nice things. It's making everything a little bit more present, a little bit more closer and active. And then I've added a little bit more gain. So what's really good about this routing system just to digress slightly, is sometimes when you're mixing and you've got everything sorted, you realize you want a little bit more level in your drums. If I've done automation on my groups already, that can be a little bit tricky. But by having these, I can just add a tiny bit more gain here. It just means the balance is better and I'm not concentrating on the individual elements. I know the drums work together as a group, so all I need to do is turn them up. Next up, we've got some spring hits. So if we see where these start, cool. This this was done to basically get things a little bit more 3D. Obviously, it's just a live snare on this, but the Tom Mish album has that dub thing going off, so I just wanted to accentuate that by having a single one-shot hit, which is taken from our Vintage Drum Roots pack. Cool, super 3D, super lovely. So we've got those going into Audio Things Springs. As we know, big fan of this one. It sounds really cool, sounds like a spring, does what we want. And then I've also got Soothe on because I was finding if you layer it up, this kind of cross stick, with it being such a strong transient, you layer that up against a live drum kit, things can get a little bit out of hand frequency wise. So by using Soothe, we're just able to pull back those transients and just calm the whole thing down a bit. So without it, A little bit too aggressive for me. So with. As you can see, Soothe is really honing in on this 2 to 8K region, which can get a little bit nasty. I've boosted it just to say, Soothe, that's the area you want to be looking at, and we want to pull things out of there. So together. Cool. Last up is this little thing called Shaky. What you'll notice is I've placed this to come just before the snare. And what that's going to do is it's going to throw us onto these verby hits. So with. <laughs> Nothing on the channel, but it's being sent to our plate reverb and then also another spring, which again is audio thing. This is a trick I like to do quite often to really start building up this 3D picture. We don't want it to just be flat with the drums. We want to be having layers, we want to be having depth, we want to be having different interests through different reverbs. And this is a really nice way to do it. These sounds are taken from our World Percussion Pack, but uh, what I'll do is I'll create a little mini sample pack from these, which you'll be able to download if you can head over to our blog. So yeah, together the drums. Excellent. Going into bass. So for this one, I thought quite a lot of people won't have access to a real bass guitar. So what I'll do is I'll program it using Modo Bass, which is from IK Multimedia. Really simple piece, but sounds cool and gives us that live bass feel. So if we listen to it.
cool. Quite a lot of saturation going off. So what we've done is we've gone from Modo Bass, which was a, uh, a Fender, Modern J, going into Ampeg from Plugin Alliance. It's their SVT, so it's a classic kind of 70s sounding bass amp, exactly the tone we're looking for. Then we go from that into our tape machine, just because we're carrying on the story of it being analog. Next up, Decapitator. Again, I wanted a bit more gain, so without. Just giving us that little bit of buzz, a little bit of bite. And then we've got a side chain from our drums just to tuck it in. On the orcs, we've got exactly the same thing going off as normal, but I obviously with it being a bass, I was going to treat it a little bit differently. So we've got a preamp, which is recreating the sound of a 1073 by Neve, going into our channel, a little bit of compression just to tuck things in. And then on our EQ, I was looking to get things to cut. So we've gone four and a half K, we're adding seven dB, a little bit at 1.6, and then a little bit of shelf right at the top, which I think is around. 12 plus K. It might sound a touch bright at the moment, but when you put it in the mix, it needs to compete with everything. You need to be able to hear it, hence as going for those top, top sounds. Right. Next up, guitars. As you can see, it's built up from a few layers. What I've also done with this is I've created, you'll see as we go along, I basically wanted to show you that you can get these kind of guitar sounds inside your DAW. You don't actually have to have amps if you don't need to. But I thought I'd show you what's great about combining it with actual amp sounds if you do have them. So first up, we've got this wall line. Awesome. Sounding pretty wild. And as you can see, there's a bit of a chain on it just to get there. Okay, without anything, it's going to sound bad. It's just a DI. As expected, hideous. But if we turn all these off and then start with them one at a time, you can see how as we build layers, we build texture and we build tone. So first, we're going into a pedal board. The idea was to place this before the amp. As you can see, we've got... A little bit of drive from is what's kind of like a tube streamer kind of idea. Going into an auto wah, because as we know, Tom Mish uses, I believe it's a Mooga Fuga by Moog Pedal, but it, this is going to do the same kind of thing. It's automatically opening and closing like a filter would. A little bit of spring reverb for the uh, vintage thing, and then going into a delay. So with just the board. <laughs> instantly sounding cooler. Then we're going to go into an amp because we want to get some reality to this. And that's just the warm setting on the Waves GTR. Nothing too complicated, nice and simple. Into a compressor just to tuck things in. 3A is a really nice compressor to use because it's super simple, two dials, it's got a little bit of bite to it and it's a classic for on guitars. Excellent. Going into outer space for that spring kind of feel. I mean, that's doing a huge job. It's really putting us into a cool location by using the spring reverb. As you can see, it's quite high, same as the echo. Just starting to get that 3D thing, which I always talk about. EQ, we've made a couple of moves. Firstly, getting rid of anything below 90. Obviously, as we know, the uh, standard tune electric guitar, I think a low E is around 70, 80, 90 hertz. We're not playing anything that low. We're on the kind of seventh fret so you know we're way up there uh, quite a bit of resonance in this 300 region so i've just pulled it out into a h delay as you can see it's automated there's nothing on the mix but we'll come to that in a minute and then finally on the end a little bit of our friend soothe just because we want to tuck those top ends in it was getting a little bit nasty just with the uh the fact that the war obviously is 
a resonant filter that's moving around, it can get a little bit pokey in the eyes. That's why I put Soothe on, just to catch anything. Okay. So that one, as you can see, is panned slightly to the right. It's got a couple of sends going to delays and reverbs. And what I also did was I recorded my amp um, in the room with a uh, Capture X on it, going into Zilla Cabs by the great guys at GGD. This is an impulse response, basically. So what I've got is I've got my pedals going into a guitar head. That's then going into a pedal which feeds my sound card. And then from that, obviously, because we've not been through a speaker yet, you use this software, which is basically impulse responses, which have been fed through a speaker, and then they've been recorded. So we're obviously using uh, one of the Zilla cabs, which is called the Pro. It's going into an Al Alnico speaker. We've got a KM184 mic on it. And then the impulse response is kind of close-ish. It's like the microphone's been pulled away from the grill a little bit. So if we take these off, this is basically what I got with the cap. For those that are interested, my signal chain is a GNL Telecaster going into a JHS preamp. I've got a Qtron WAR. Then I've also got a Eventide H9 delay for, for the effects. And then I've got a little bit more gain on the end, which is coming from a Nobles distortion. And then that's going into a Black Star. So yeah, as you can say, that's the sound. A little bit of EQ. Been left how it is, apart from these low mids, which we know we can get a little bit nasty. And then Soothe again, just tucking things in. Excellent. And those together? Cool. Okay. And then that's being backed up by these Y guitars that are just playing chords. Again, these are DI. Nothing because I want to treat them the same. We we'll put it on the group. So if we put these together. Can listen to them. Really vibe being washed out. So, what have we got? Guitar going straight into a tape, just for a little bit of saturation and gain. We've then gone into our favorite. Guitar strip for our arm waves. As you can see, it was just the same one copied over, but I've got rid of the wall because I don't need it. So we're getting a little bit of drive from the pedals. What I can do is I'll turn these off and we can hear them. So obviously we're getting a little bit of push from this Tube Screamer-esque pedal, going into a spring and then going into a little bit of delay. If we turn that off, you can hear it straight in. Sounds like a DI guitar, exactly what you'd expect. Into our amp, again, warm setting, just to carry on the story. A little bit of extra drive here because I wanted that push semi-clean kind of tone. Sounding cool. It's just on the edge of breakup, which is kind of how I like to run my guitars. Into a 3A, a trusty compressor. Barely being touched, hardly moving at all, but it's there just in case. Next up, Spaced Out. This is a new plugin I got uh, fairly recently. The uh, the lovely guy sent it over from Baby Audio. And this setting, uh, Beautiful Roads, which I've used before, obviously it's meant for a Rhodes piano, but it's just lush at getting that 3D space. It's got chorus, it's got some movement. It's kind of doing things I don't fully understand, but it just sounds great. I don't care.
you can hear it moving through the phases. So obviously, like there's bigger amounts of modulation for a bigger circle or bigger amounts of effect. We've got some chorus in there. It's kind of got a little bit of an 80s thing going off, but it just sounds stunning. And last up, of course, After Space. <laughs> And all those guitars together. Lovely. On the group, three A. Just tucking things in and a touch of side change coming from the drums. Just because, you know, this has got that hip hop thing going off. And we want to want to really push those drums forward. Last up, Rhodes. Let's have a listen. As you can see, it's been stretched quite heavily. It's 85 BPM, which is the, of obviously the tempo of the session, but we've doubled the kind of length of it just to make it fit. Let's have a look on the channel. We've got the filter down a little bit, and as you can hear, it's kind of got that like sampled feeling, which I think works really nicely with the track. All those grainy artifacts are just lovely. Going into tape. Just thickens it up a little bit and then a touch of side chain. Nothing too complicated on our group. As always, virtual mix rack. Going into our channel. Just keeping things in check. Nothing particularly happening on the compressor. Just a touch, maybe a dB at the most. And then our EQ isn't particularly doing a lot. We're brightening it up a tiny bit. And that's about it, really. Tiny bit of weight added to it as well at 300, just to beef it up a bit. And all together. <laughs> Into the next section. So we're starting to show off these drums a little bit. So what we've got going off here is we've got our last of our guitar section, but we've run some automation on this just to kind of like give it that dub feeling as it wraps over. Cool. So what we've done is by automating our dry wet on our H delay, we're able to input the signal into the delay but as you can see the feedback's really high it's at 125 so it's going to start to self-oscillate and give us this noise that we're looking for as it progresses along we wanted to kind of calm things down a little bit so what i've done is i've automated the filter to come down so you'll be able to see these things i should be able to show you both lanes i'll probably make it easier cool so we can see feedback is high mix is going up and filters coming down so let's listen to it one more time Okay, so quite a simple trick, but just really nice to transition between sections. Into the next bit, 
As you can see, we pick things up a bit. We've got our tempo shifting from 85 to 110. There it is. And that's also affecting the sound of the delay because the delay time's again shorter as it speeds up. So obviously you're getting that pitching effect. Okay. <laughs> to the B section. We've got our drums, same channel, same things going off. Just wanted to show off a few more of the loops, which are just sounding incredible. Next up, we've got this little loop, which is an absolutely lovely thing taken from our Astral Interludes pack. So we can have a little listen. Filters open up to reveal some more of the sound. Lovely. And it complements the guitars really nicely. Same channel, because we're using these wide ones. Cool. And a high one. Nice little trick, that, for any of you guitar players out there. Play the same chord, and then obviously the... One across is just the same notes, but we're picking them out an octave above just to kind of show some progression. Um, yep, and that's kind of it. Quite a simple one, but I think it's just shown you that if you get the layers right together, you can get some really, really lovely sounds that kind of give you that band vibey kind of, kind of feel. Last up, let's check the master. So EQ, just cutting off a little bit of 20 hertz, just making sure nothing silly gets through. Tape machine as always, because it gives us a bump, a little bit of saturation and a little bit of noise, which is what we're looking for. Two compressors this time, mainly because I wanted the drums quite loud and I found in the snare was cutting through a little bit too harsh. So what I've done is I've gone super fast attack, super fast release, barely any threshold because I only want to catch it. And then I've got a two to one. The thing that's important on this one is I've got my high pass filter at 70. So I don't want to get any of the kick. It's all about catching the snare and just tucking it in a little bit, which means I can push the drums quite hard, but not have my channels clipping basically. So as you can see. It's barely being triggered by anything other than the snare. If I start to bring this high pass filter down, which is what the compressor is listening to, basically. This isn't always high passing the actual signal you're hearing, it's just what's going into the compressor. So as I start to bring this down, you'll see it starts to be triggered by the kick, which is not what we want. tighter and just an, a nice little thing to do just in case your drums are getting over the top next up we've gone shadows hills just because it's got a cool bit of attitude to it optical is a slow compressor so if you've never used one of these before there's two windows the first one shows you your optical reduction which is a lot slower and then the second one on the right here is shown as our second compressor which is a discrete one the optical one you can't change the settings for other than input so it's only taking off a DB. Just tucking things in nicely. And then I've got a second one, which is just giving us a little bit more vibe. I've got the slowest possible attack. And then I've got the fastest release. So it's letting the transient through, but it's clamping down and giving us that vibey energy. And then last up is our limiter and it's taken off. Four DB max, nothing too aggressive, but I just wanted that complete fat kind of sound. Cool, yeah, so there it is. If there's anything that you'd like us to go over or it didn't quite make sense, give me a shout. This will be all this will all be documented in the blog as always, where we'll be writing a bit more in depth about what was going off. As I mentioned before, I'll create a little mini sample pack from this one so you can download a few of the sounds and get stuck in and enjoy them. I'll even throw this session in as well, because you might as well have that. So yeah, cool. Thanks guys. <laughs>